Hi guys, uh, so I wanted to continue uh, doing some more tutorials regarding DP pixel filter and, and DP image filter. So essentially I got a question here, why I wouldn't you know, plug the occlusion into a buffer and then um, output that directly use through the uh, node image filter. And yes, I it's absolutely possible, it's just that you are locked down to having to use brute force uh, anti-aliasing for that which in a sense for occlusion for example it's it's going to take a lot, a lot longer to render not a lot longer but it, it do add the render time so uh, I w but I will showcase that because um, just to show you guys how you can set that up if you want to do that because it also opens up I mean if you're not afraid of render times and uh, you can do it this way uh, that I'm going to show you can you have like all these possibilities to create a bunch of different passes uh, to output through through Lightwave that are very custom and, and so on. Uh, in this case I will just stick to occlusion just because it's a shader uh, but essentially you're, you're you could output any type of of, uh, of uh, data pass such as um, point position and normals and whatever you want. So but first and foremost, I would like to talk a little bit about adaptive sampling versus brute force uh, anti-aliasing. So in this case, we have the occlusion override. Uh, so I'll just hit F9 to render uh, the adaptive sampling version. And what you can see here is that after the first an uh, anti-aliasing pass, uh, Lightwave notice, or the render engine, well, Lightwave, it's the render engine, uh, <laughs> it notices that it doesn't have to put any samples here. So it just puts samples where it 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 uh, f you know sees the noise based on on the adaptive sampling threshold here. So a lower value will of course detect more noise, uh, but in this case it's fine. And well, as you can see, it's 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 very effective in placing samples where it should. Okay, so 40.8 seconds for this. Uh, so now if I would uh, switch this adaptive sampling off and say okay I need minimum 24 samples so uh, because otherwise it will look very noisy so again I would just hit F9 uh, and the difference here is of course that each pixel no matter if it needs to or not will be evaluated 24 times uh, uh, with, with uh, uh, adaptive s oh sorry uh, anti-aliasing here so there are render times to to save <laughs> so to speak if you can use adaptive sampling it's it's uh, it's really is, it boils down to that so 1 minute and 1 second versus uh versus 40 seconds so there there are things uh, there time render time to save of course as you can see uh, but if you can deal with this and having like using brute force and uh, AA, uh, what you can do then is of course to uh, well let me close this. So essentially, we would like to render the the beauty and the occlusion at the same time. Uh, so what you do to do that is uh, let's go into the node pixel filter. So instead of doing this global shading all right like that, I will take this shader and put it into global color one, okay? And then I will add the node pixel filter here, or node, node image filter, sorry. And search for buffers, and I will get, get global buffer. So in this topmost color here, I want to output that as a, let's say a PNG 24 for now and uh, I will call, well, let's hit click on file name and I will call this um, occlusion okay so let's close that let's go to the global elimination because I want to render the beauty and occlusion at the same time so I just enable these things so I get both the worlds rendered so if I do a, well I will actually set the minimum samples to 1 for now and just do a test render 
uh, to make sure that everything works as it should. So the beauty looks like it's evaluating correctly. Okay, and then over here in my content, I output the occlusion, which looks like this. So now I just have to uh, dial up the. Well, what what I can do here is to to sh just showcase that adaptive sampling will not work with this. So uh, let's go back here and let's enable that ad adaptive sampling, and I will do another render for that. Okay, so one two minutes. And of course, if we take a look at occlusion here, well, it didn't receive any uh, anti-aliasing, of course. So I need to brute force this. As I said before, I just want to show you guys, so you don't have to experiment that much yourself. Okay, so three minutes and twenty-four seconds for brute force AA. But then, of course, if we take a look at the occlusion, it is also uh, much more refined. Um, so, there we have that. One thing to bear in mind is that if you are using linear color space workflow and you use this node image filter output, it will, by default, it will output into linear space uh, because essentially this should be an, a, be an EXR file and so on. So, the thing is that when you do comparisons, for example in this case, uh, what I did was to render the, the regular occlusion override in the color and also output to a, a, a global color buffer uh, just to, to showcase this and it's something that you, you have to be aware of. Uh, what we see here is the display in sRGB. If I change this one to linear it looks much darker. And well, let's switch this one back to sRGB. Let's take a look at the output of occlusion here. We can see that it's darker, right? This is not wrong. It's just that what we are seeing here is a linear image. Uh, it's not having any gamma correction uh, applied to it. So if I would s switch this one here to linear, and uh, let's take a look at the image again, we can see that they are much closer to each other. But here we also see another difference. And if we take a look, I'm actually using a relensed camera and I have irradiance falloff of 3, which makes this uh, vignetting going on. Now, when, when rendering things out through the node image filter, uh, you don't get that. So that's also something you have to be aware of. Um, and usually when, when rendering for compositing, uh, using in-camera effects uh, like this isn't really you know, a good thing to do. So, but but I just wanted to make sure that you guys can can see that, uh, or or understand that there there will be a difference, uh, and the difference is essentially that you are watching things in sRGB space here, while in in here it's actually saved out in linear. So just to to showcase this a little bit m more, I will jump into fusion here, and I will take this occlusion and bring it in here. So we see this dark occlusion. So I need to adjust uh, the the gamma here. So I will enable the loot and I will edit it and I will input a 2.2 gamma here. So now we are back on track and when this is what the occlusion should look like when we look at it, so to speak. Uh, so now you know that as well. So a couple of things to think about when doing things in Lightwave. Okay, so now finally we're going to go through uh, tricking Lightwave to output a occlusion, alpha and a beauty from within the same render and also supporting adaptive sampling. And this is a huge, this is a trick uh, of course and it's an ugly one. So let's start with the node pixel filter and see what I've done there. So essentially what I did, I searched for buffers and I added the render buffer, this one here. And I essentially what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm telling Lightwave that hey, there is an alpha channel that I want to store somewhere else. In this case I store it in the global alpha 2 channel. Okay? Because I'm actually replacing the alpha channel with my occlusion shader. Okay? Um, 
So that's essentially what I set up here in the pixel filter. Okay, and then in the image filter, I do as before, I just have this um, this uh, alpha channel being stored as alpha. Okay. Um, and the funny thing here is that what I think makes this possible is that this buffer here is evaluated before this one here. So Lightwave sees that hey I have an alpha channel and I will store it somewhere else so I do that and then I will overwrite the, the existing alpha channel, the real alpha channel with an occlusion. Uh, so an ugly trick. Then I noted something uh, because with the native saver in Lightwave you, ha you have the possibility to save out the alpha as a separate s file. So as you can see I have set that up but for some reason it crashed when I, when I actually did F10 here. So the workaround is to not use the native saver. I will actually use EXR Trader instead. So I've added EXR Trader here. And here it just created a, a preset where I made sure that the beauty render and the alpha are stored as separate EXR files. And for the alpha, I also named it occlusion, like that. So let's uh, actually do a test render for this. So And since I'm actually using EXR Trader, I made sure that it it is set to Viper and save buffers. Uh, because I, I just need to do an F10 and, and the Lightweave will output everything, uh, or F9, sorry, and, and, and EXR Trader will output things correctly. So let's go ahead and do a test render for this. Okay, three minutes and ten seconds. So this is going to be kind of fun. So here is the, the, the beauty render. And then if I look in the alpha channel, I have the occlusion here. And the real alpha channel has been stored. If I bring up this one here, we have the alpha here. Now this, this is the old one, I can delete that. Uh, so if I would jump into uh, Fusion again, let's remove that one. So I will just drag these guys in. Uh, so the alpha, here you have that. And it has proper anti-aliasing as well, based on the adaptive sampling. And then we have the beauty of course. And then we have the occlusion. And this one looks a little bit strange. And it's 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 actually it's it's not strange that it looks strange <laughs> because if I go into channels here it tries to use the alpha channel as as uh, its alpha but since the alpha channel is the occlusion it, it looks weird so just make sure to turn off the alpha channel and you are back on track so to speak so I'm actually cheating uh, Lightweight now uh, or tricking I should say to, to support adaptive sampling for occlusion, alpha, and, of course, the beauty. And it all renders in one go. That being said, uh, so we have a, what did we say, three minute render for this. Uh, three minutes and ten seconds for a combined beauty and alpha output. Uh, the interesting thing would be to see what the render times are for uh, if I would separate this out and, and actually render them one by one, so to speak. So in this case it would be two scene files, uh, just to, to have something to measure with. So I will simply close this one now, because I have noted, noted the, the down the time, the render time. So I'll just disable all these guys here, and... Uh, do a beauty render to see what that will take. So, 1 minute and 21 seconds for the beauty. Um, okay, I will note that down. So let's optimize this now for a occlusion override rendering. So I will enable this one, I will take the occlusion into color, I will disable this one just in case. Uh, okay. Let's take a look at the camera or rendering options rather. So that should be it for creating a occlusion only render 
as optimized as possible. So let's do an F9 for this. So 37.5 seconds for this one. Um, so let's calculate the combined render time for these two render passes. So the combined render time for the beauty and occlusion, if we would render them separately, is 1 minute and 58 seconds. Uh, while when we render things combined, uh, but still using, uh, with my trick to use adaptive sampling, it will end up th on 3 minutes and 10 seconds. So separating things out is actu actually very good for, for speed purposes and the ability to optimize each render scene for what they are going to render. Uh, however, keeping things in one scene file and output things is nice when in in a, a sort of like in in a pre-production phase where you try to figure out you know exactly what you need, and o only having one scene to update, uh, you know, with changes and stuff like that, it's re really nice. But once that is done and uh, there are no more changes coming in, uh, I think it's a good idea to to actually split things up and and render separately. Uh, just to gain render speed and, and things like that. So, yeah, I think that concludes this tutorial. So, cheers and thanks for watching.